Hello to all of you from around the world. I want to welcome you back to another Soul Liberty Today. We're broadcasting live from our studio right here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and on KMET 1490 AM radio in Southern California. My name is Brian Wesley Johnson, and whether you're at home, driving, or at work, we're always glad you're here with us. We have another amazing show for you today. Um, but before we get to it, I'm joined today by Awakening to the Joy author, Helena Goldstein. Hello, Helena. And Hello. Sheila Applegate. <laughs> and Sheila Applegate, host of the Consciously Awesome Living show, which airs at 12 noon here on Soul Liberty TV. Hello, Sheila. How are you? I'm doing well today. How about you, Brian? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, I am, I'm all in the midst of the holiday season now got our tree up and ready to go and and uh people around the neighborhood have uh, all their lights up and that kind of thing so it's like beautiful on our on our street you know <laughs> um yeah yeah so what have you uh, helena we haven't i haven't talked to you in a minute what have you been up to oh i i've been working <laughs> we're going to talk about this because i've been i've been preparing something that's called the seven, seven days of joy and rest um so it's been a lot of work but good work that, that I'm, I'm so glad that i'm able to do and then in between that long walks long walks in the forest that i absolutely love and where everything oh. falls into place Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Wow. Okay, well, that's that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. I mean, Sheila, we talked last week, you know, um, <laughs> uh, but anything happening between then and now? I mean, anything that you want to kind of report on to our, our audience? <laughs> We had an amazing fractal illumination gathering. That's right. This past That's right. Week. It was just, you know, it just keep getting better and better. And it feels like people come in with instant joy. And some mm -hmm. of them, you know, are coming back. So wow. they might have known somebody else from before. But even the new people just like come into this. Like it feels like they've already known each other before we even begin, and then it just gets even better. So that was really exciting. Mm. Mm, well, that is fantastic. That's fantastic. I know I love the pictures on uh, on uh, Facebook, and I share them to our Inspiration Central group, so that people could check those out. <laughs> um, this is, I just love seeing love seeing all the f smiling faces and that kind of thing. It was wonderful absolutely wonderful yeah. um you know um you know i love what we're going to be talking about today um because i think it's really important um you know uh in the midst of the holiday season everyone uh one tradition for many people is to make resolutions to improve their lives uh, the goals run the spectrum from like losing weight to being more proactive, but most people have problems keeping their resolutions throughout the year. You know, in a recent study by the National Institutes of Health, after tracking 200 New Year's resolvers over a two year period, they found that only 19% were able to keep their resolutions for the two years a whopping 77% maintain their pledges for only one week. Wow. So today we're going to be talking about a way for each of us to inject joy into creating our New Year's resolutions and help us maintain them throughout the year. I mean, what a great, great topic, ladies. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I'm glad I'm talking to both of you about this because I can't think of two more people that, two other people that would help me do this in, in this kind of empowered way, because um, you both bring this diversity of thought to it. Do you do b either one of you make New Year's resolutions? I mean, Helena, I'll go to you first. I actually don't. <laughs> Uh, I do live a very intentional life. I do work with, mm -hmm. uh, with intentions or not manifestation, not New Year resolutions, but I do do <laughs> New Year gratitude. And we get oh. back to how things can uh, can be okay. combined and how we can 
create experiences from that. But yes, New Year gratitude, that's me. Okay, wow. Why don't you do, do, do you have like a, a certain philosophical um, a point around not doing resolutions? Can you share that? Well, that's because I, I am very intentional about pretty much any aspect of my life. So I do it throughout mm -hmm. the year. And whenever there's something that arises, something that I want to create, whether it's something within me or something outside me, I start working with it. So so I don't wait until New Year, so to speak. Uh, and and these things can, uh, can uh, unfold over various times. Uh, stretches of time but it doesn't mean that i don't think we should do new year resolutions it just doesn't fit my rhythm but it can be done in meaningful and joyful ways for sure okay okay nice what about you sheila do you do resolutions new year's resolutions i'm i do not either in this yeah. but in a similar way to helena as she was speaking but i think early on it was a rebellion type thing i really don't like to do <laughs> things that the world tells me i should do especially when they feel superficial and the power. Um, <laughs> right <laughs> So I think it started that way when I was younger. I do remember in my 20s when I was deep into, you know, the beginning of my journey, really learning metaphysics. I remember the first year I wanted to just uh, meditate at New Year's. And I've always also found like getting really drunk and being with a crowd of people to start the new year didn't ever feel like a good vibration to me <laughs> even when i was younger <laughs> so, so um there i'm with helena in the sense that i am intentional throughout the year i like to you know i feel like just a, about maybe it is in sort of the um, end of summer, beginning of fall i see my year you know and i i set some intentions for what I wanted to accomplish during the year, but based mm -hmm. also on that, these are the things that I feel right now. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm excited to explore this because I think there's many layers to this. And I think there's an absolute beautiful way to turn this tradition, which really goes back into um, the solstice celebrations from around the world through ancient times. I think we mm -hmm. can turn this into an intention or a ritual that can be really supportive of us on our journey. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're going to be you? talking about, talking tomorrow <laughs> about too, winter solstice. We're going to be talking yeah. about winter solstice yeah. tomorrow. Um, I don't do them either in the traditional sense, like the two of you. Um, I take stock. I take stock of the year mm -hmm. um um and like you i'm like both of you i'm very i'm already very intentional about um uh, staying connected to source um uh, really diving down in what i'm feeling what do i want um and going through a process of 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 doing affirmations but I, but at the end of the year, I just take stock about the year, and I and I go into gratitude for that, um, and then I kind of like map out what are the big things that I want to accomplish that are part of that intentionality, um, mm -hmm. and I kind of write them out, and I might even update my my treasure map, my, my you know some people call that a vision board. Uh, with newer, fresher information that reflects where I am today, not where I was a year ago. And then I move forward with that. And then that becomes part of my meditative uh, and affirmative kind of actions that I take throughout the rest of the year. So that's what I do too. So I think we're all, we're all kind of in sync in some ways around that. Um, Helena, question to you though about, you know, New Year's resolutions in general. Um, as I was talking about uh, the study from NIH, the National Institutes of Health, where we were talking about, you know, people who are creating these resolutions and then the overwhelming majority fail. Why do you think that's so? Well, I think that most of these resolutions come from a place of discontentment, actually. Mm. rather than mm -hmm. from a place of joyful creation it's it's like the, the the typical example is oh i've gained too much weight throughout christmas i'm going to lose weight or i'll stop smoking or this and that so right. 
so 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 behind it there's this feeling something is wrong with me i'm not living my life the way i should and it's very difficult to stop but after new year i will do it so so right. there's just not enough to motivate people and also they don't i i, I think most people we're not being taught in school how to create intentional living right we're not being taught how to uh, make these things work so so it becomes they they just don't have most people don't have the tools for it so so there's just this wish i'm going to do this or that and then it kind of fades out right yeah i agree with you i really 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 because i know in the past when i've created resolutions and they number one they would always just come at the end of the year right i mean they weren't like things that i really thought about throughout the year in terms of how i wanted to improve my life experience as a whole it was always like little things like oh well um i'm going to give up fast food or or or, I'm, or, or for the month of january i'm not going to drink or you know the, all that kind of stuff and of course, it I always failed, uh, you know, uh, or they always didn't work out. What about you, Sheila? What do you think about this really quickly as we're coming up on break? I think, I think that, you know, you both really hit it on the head. I, I'm thinking of the word resolution and yeah. that's resolve, yeah. right? Determination. And I think that's a vibration that is not anchored, right? That's a, we're, we're coming from our head. And I think that mm -hmm. because of that term, we often do people come from a head thing, what I should be doing, not what I want to in the core of my being, or not from a place of, of joy, you know, like, what do I want this new year to be? And so we're like, you both said, we're taking away, you know, we're doing something, putting in that we will do something we don't like, <laughs> you know, uh, um, instead of finding the joy and filling up the space with the things that we right. do want, that we do like, and then from there, the other things fall into place more easily. So I think right. that if we turn it around and, and just tweak it, we can really come up with some ideas for people who do want to, you know, follow the tradition and, and have a more joyful year coming ahead. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. In fact, um, we're going to take a quick break, ladies. Uh, but don't worry, everyone. We've got even more Solivity Day today coming up where we're going to be talking more about New Year's resolutions, how to inject joy in them and create ones that we can maintain. Um, in, the next, in the next segment, we're going to talk more about what is joyful success, right? Um, in, in the midst of this and what's the difference between, you know, that and resolutions and, and that kind of thing. So stay by, stay right here. We've got more Solivity today in about two minutes. Hi there. This is Brian with Solivity.com. I want to share some exciting news about our new Aspire Academy by Solivity. Now, you probably want to know what the Aspire Academy by Solivity is. Well, it exclusively connects you with people around the globe and who share the intense desire to improve themselves and create a better life for themselves today. There's classes, there's workshops, there's live events, and even more exclusively just for you. You see, I wanted you to have a safe space where you could grow, you can learn, and it would empower you in all aspects of your life, including your mind, your body, and your soul. So how do you get started? Well, it is so easy. First of all, the best part, joining Aspire Academy is absolutely free. Just click on the Join Now button, sign up, and begin your journey as a special part of this invitation to you, there are some free courses that are available for you to try from our amazing roster of coaches and collaborators. It's our way of saying thank you for all of your support and being with us along our journey of expansion. I hope you enjoy the Aspire Academy by Solivity today. Start the process. 
learn more about your passion, your purpose, and how to live a higher quality life. Hey, we're back here with more on Soul Liberty today. Uh, we're talking about how to create and maintain joyful New Year's resolutions that truly bring about the changes you want in your life. And of course, back with us are Helena Goldstein and Sheila Applegate. Good morning and good afternoon again to both of you. Um, let's talk about New Year's resolutions and joyful success. And so the question is, Helena, can New Year's resolutions lead to joyful success? And like, what is joyful success? Yeah, I absolutely believe that they can. And it depends on where they come from. I believe that if we can make them from a space of self-love, and 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 joy and genuine dedication i think it's possible and actually i came to think about something when i was in my in my 20s i smoked i smoked like 20 cigarettes a day and and and, wow. and i wanted to stop and i'm sure i also had some new year resolution that clearly didn't take me anywhere and i just couldn't but i stopped when i started discovering that what was what i was really missing was to to be able to breathe deeply and to be able to feel what I what I was feeling. When that that positive intention, that longing actually, when that kind of found its place, I stopped smoking. So it's the wow. same with New Year resolution. If we can do it from a space of something, this is something I really want. Not I should not, but I really want it. I long for it, and I think it's it's possible. Um, as for the other part of your question, what is joyful success? I think that could be defined in so many ways, but but in one way you could say that that you can live your life and see every day as a joyful success in the sense that we all do our best. We really do. If we could do something else, we would have done it. So So every day we have lived as a joyful success in the sense that we did our best. We did our best, and, and joy is there somewhere. Um, but other, otherwise, to me, joyful success is, is, is when we create something from a space of joy from the beginning to the end. So from the, from the way we intend things and how we then make them happen and to the end, bring joy along. I love that. I love that. What is joyful success to you, Sheila? Well, you know, as... Helena, as you were speaking, I had these thoughts about when we look at the New Year's resolution, we're often actually resolving to do a step in the process of reaching what we want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go to the mm -hmm. traditional ones that everybody seems to do. I'm going to go to the gym or, or I'm going to <laughs> lose weight, right? So right. Um, it's not, if, if, it's, if you're putting it up, it's like I have to sacrifice in order to get what I want. So just like you said, Helena, what is it that you want? Giving cigarettes up wasn't a, a joyful resolution right that was mm -hmm. you had to get under the surface to see that what you wanted what would happen if you did those things right what were you really mm -hmm. looking for so if it's if it's you know be, i want to be able to get on the floor and play with my grandkids or yeah. i want to feel better about myself i want to have more mm -hmm. energy um we're moving for those as the joyful success. What will bring us joy? How does it feel and resonate? And then from that space, we can we can choose joyful things along right. the way um, mm -hmm. and find joy in the process that we're doing. But when we focus just on determining to get through the wall of whatever that is, we're not we're not seeing past it. And so we're just going to push up against it and we're not going to be able to get to what we really want because we haven't even identified it or brought any joy into the process. 
Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about this, this specific aspect of like resolving to do something. Um, again, this relates to the difference between joy and happiness, right? And a lot of mm-hmm. times we, we confuse the two and we bring the two in the same space, but they're completely different, right? Where happiness is something that's more man-made, right? It's the, you know, we, we, we become happy as the result from something. Joy is all is innate, right? It is already here. It is the, it is the ongoing, uh, everlasting, ever present excitement and celebration of all that there is, right? Um, Mm -hmm. and that by tapping into that, you, you feel joyful. And a lot of times we don't take the time to do that. Even as you were saying, Helena, around just we, we, we wake up in the morning and we immediately go to work or we do things. And, and from the moment that we put the toothbrush to, to, to our teeth, we're complaining about something or we're finding fault <laughs> about something. <laughs> And we mm-hmm. don't take the time to really just be in a very peaceful state and saying, wow, what I wonder what the day holds for me today that that will make that will create joy that will create uh, um, me to feel more joyful inside. Right. To bring this joy out of my side. Maybe when you walk outside, you see this beautiful robin that's just kind of sitting on a tree or maybe you have just a wonderful drive into work. I mean, whatever it is, we don't take the time to notice. And so what becomes the dominant? The dominant becomes this heavy, lower vibrational energy um, of, of, of finding fault with ourselves, finding fault with our life experience, may it be our job, our partner, our whatever it is. And then, then we resolve where I'm not going to feel like that any, anymore, right? I'm going to do something that doesn't make me feel that way. And that's not how we manifest stuff. We manifest stuff from the affirmative, right? From the positive affirmative view. And that's what joy can do. So thank you both for talking about that. Thank you. That, that's so, so, so I, I feel very strongly about this, uh, as you can see. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> um, because, it, you know, it, 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 is, it is a shift, right? I mean, this this shift um, out of literally trying to fix ourselves would that be a good i think that's i think that's what we're mm-hmm. literally trying to do we're trying to I fix think, you know yeah go ahead Sheila. i feel like when we think of success really if we think of success in any area of our life we're reaching for joy right because yes. that's the point yes. of yes. being successful yes. is to have joy so when we turn it around and choose joy and make a commitment to bring joy into our life, we're automatically successful and then everything else falls into place. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And and um really quickly, Helena, you gave us the key. And one of the keys that you said was when you wake up and where you're 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 experiencing the new year, you move into gratitude. That's like the mm. first thing that you do. And if you go into gratitude, it goes to joy. You can't help but go into joy. Right. <laughs> exactly. It just spirals it, up. Yeah. <laughs> it just, and it goes right, boom, boom. And you're like, wow, my life is really, it's a lot better than I thought it was. I'm doing mm. okay. I'm doing well. There's more that I want to accomplish. But man, things, I'm all right. I'm okay. Mm. Right. Man, listen, we're going to, I love, I'm, I love in this conversation. Listen, we're going to take another break, everyone. Uh, but when we come back, we'll talk about, again, we want to make these contrasts to help you. And so we, we, we're going to talk about joyful success versus goal setting, right? What's this difference that that's there and how to help each one of you inject more joy into this whole process of resolving so that we can have better lives. So we'll be back in two minutes. Do you see me kneeling on this dual roller called Parasetter? 
it's actually comfortable because of this channel and the softness of the special foam. It feels like my kneecaps are being massaged. When I lie down, my spine is housed in this channel while the convex rollers massage my muscles. They let go and lengthen. There's a traction effect from my head on the headrest and my mid back from the rib wrap, which hugs me. When I start the breathing sequence, I feel calm because my cortisol levels are dropping. Lower cortisol means bye-bye constant hunger. Parasetter is 40 inches long and much more comfortable than old style rollers, but it weighs only 10 ounces. Parasetter, just like Pilates was, is no longer an insider secret. Do yourself a favor, reset your parasympathetic nervous system. Defeat stress, lying, sitting, kneeling, or standing. This unique patented roller helps everyone. Six years ago when I started Solivity, my vision was to support everyone in improving their life through the discovery of their passion and purpose so they could become the best version of themselves to battle fear and ignorance and create a better world today. Get inspired to live your passion and purpose. Visit Solivity.com now. Hey there, we're glad that you're back here with us on Solivity today. We are talking about how to create joyful New Year's resolutions. Basically also how to maintain them as well. Uh, back with, with me here on Solivity Today is Helena Goldstein and Sheila Applegate. And, you know, we were talking about this concept of joyful success. Like, what is it for both of, for all of us? Um, you know, can we kind of use New Year's resolutions to get to joyful success? Um, and I wanted us to kind of dig a little bit deeper into what all this means by adding another concept, right? And that's goal setting. Um, Sheila, what do you believe is the difference between joyful success and goal setting for your for you in your life? Well, I think in a way I alluded to it in the beginning when I talked about how we're focused on the steps versus yeah. on what we truly want. And that doesn't mean, so years ago, I made a choice to run my business based on the joy model, which is, do, does it bring me joy? If it brings me joy, do it. If mm. it doesn't bring me joy, don't do it. And I think that that would panic a lot of people to think, well, but I, you wouldn't <laughs> be successful that way. But I don't right. think that if people really looked at my career and what I do on a regular basis that you would say I'm not accomplishing things, right? Right. Nor right. that I start, stopped accomplishing. I've accomplished more. Um, and I do have um, intentions. I have goals. Like I said, in September, I tuned in and at that point, there were projects that I thought were going to be done two years ago. But then last year, I went in a different direction. And, and then now I'm like, okay, it feels like it's time to accomplish, finish up these projects. And they're all falling into place because there's this ebb and flow of moving where we need to know, need to go in that moment. And then, um, so they're fluid goals, you know, they're fluid right. and they're moving and the, the current that they move with is joy. So I guess I'm getting a little abstract perhaps, but um, that's what I'm thinking about when we talk about okay. this right now. Okay, I can feel that, I feel that, I feel that. What about, what about you, Helena, in terms of like, well, when you're, yeah, when you're working toward joyful success versus goal setting, or are they similar for you or a little bit different? They're very different for me, actually. And um, okay. when I think, and that might not be true for everyone, but when I think about goal setting, I think about my mind, my thoughts, trying to figure out mm. what I should do and when I should do it and when I should reach that goal. 
And and that's very kind of my mind to try that, but my mind is not a very good tool for that. My mind is not able to look into the future. <laughs> Thank you, mind. And and it doesn't and it and there's a lot of that's much more to both life and me and the world and and the ebb and flow as the, that Sheila mentioned that my mind doesn't understand. But when I think mm-hmm. of joyful success and of intentional living, that to me is, is an organic, a holistic process. And it's pretty much how how you described it, Sheila. It's within that process goals can be created they can be achieved they can be exceeded or not reached but it's still a joyful success because you you are, live in alignment with with that bigger flow you you have joy with you and um, and you create what you were really meant to create and what and not just what what the mind thought would be the best steps as you said mhm mhm Mm-hmm. You know, I'm loving this. I, what what I'm what I'm being led to kind of talk about is this this idea. Just to kind of like crystallize this is again, as I said before, we were talking about this joy, right? That's ever present, right? It's always mm-hmm. there. It, it exists whether or not you believe in it or you're in it or you bring to it or 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 you jump into it or not right it's kind of like air this air is here right we don't have to see it it's just here as right. opposed to goals which are these finite kinds of things okay i've reached my goal right that's different than being in a state of joy where you're affirming or your intention your intention is i'm going to be in a state of joy right? That can grow and grow into the infinite, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're always ever, ever present in joy. And so it's not this, you know, you never reach an end, you just keep building and building and building and building into this intention that attracts to you what you want to create. It's kind of like the difference between asking for a car, right? Or Mm -hmm. you're affirming that you will have reliable, consistent transportation no matter where you want to go, that that will always be available for you and that it's with ease, peace, and grace. Those are two different feelings with that we resonate in. Um, Helena, can you give us an example? Maybe it's an example of one of your intentions that you make for yourself at the beginning of the year? Um, well, I don't make them in the beginning of the year for, because what happens for me at the beginning of the year, I go into this gratitude and then the intention that arises for me spontaneously is the intention for peace in the world and peace and joy for, mm-hmm. for my loved ones. These are the things that come like arise. Yeah. Um, but but outside outside the, the new year, what I notice when I create those intentions is that exactly they they happen very similar way as, as what you just described so for example i at some point i found out i want to go to an island on that's called shikoku on in japan and be part of a group that that goes for a very long and very uh, for me challenging hike and when i created mm. that intention i thought it would be about how far i can go how many hours <laughs> but it became the intention became to feel great to be able to participate mm. in that in that hike and in that experience and to feel great on every level and what's been happening since then is that i've been become stronger i've, I've I, my my body is just getting better and better and i'm unfolding in all kinds of ways but but the intention is just that i feel great there i love 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 that um you know again it, it 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 feels this feeling of of elevating mm-hmm. our ask right of ourselves mm-hmm. and the universe and that kind of thing which i think is just fantastic and brings about a completely different experience for ourselves um listen everyone we've got to take a quick break but we've got more on this Uh, Because we want to make sure that we kind of round this conversation out with, 
you know, what are some of the ways that we can start experiencing uh, joyful success in our lives? Like, how do we do it? What are the tips that we can give you? And especially with a fantastic event that's coming up that I'm sure you're going to want to know about. So we're going to be we're going to take this quick break and we'll be back in a little under two minutes. Satana products at our Go shop at go.soliberty.com. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity, and fame. Living your passion, feeling your life has purpose. So liberty is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. Hey, we're back here with more on Soul Liberty today. We're talking about how to create and maintain joyful New Year's resolutions that can bring about those changes that you want in your life. And so Helena Goldstein and Sheila Applegate are back with me as we make this final turn to bring it on home, which is how we can really experience joyful success in our lives through some intentionality and and, and affirmative action. And so Helena, I'm going to go to you for what your thoughts are about how we do this. So the first thing, and that could be a great new year resolution is to, is to commit to, connecting with joy to make yeah. it part of yeah. your every single day to keep connecting with joy and and as as we do that and, and it becomes more easier and becomes more natural for us then allow that joy to infuse more and more of your life that in itself is joyful success just doing that mm-hmm. and because it also defines who you then what you do in the world, because now you're mm-hmm. motivated by joy and, and who you are in the world. So, so, so let joy define you and then whatever you decide to create specifically, uh, again, bring joy in. And, and the last thing that, that might be kind of surprising is to let go of results. <laughs> Let go of the idea that it has has to result in this and that, but allow life to 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 lead you there. That actually often that leads to much better results, but it also yeah. takes away the pressure. Yeah. Let's 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 pause and go into that a little bit because I think people need to hear about Sheila that part of the equation letting go of the results what does that mean for you as you when you do your intentions and affirmative mm-hmm. actions around joyful success i think that that's primary you know anytime <laughs> that we attach to results that come to us at the beginning of the process we are limiting ourselves and um and we're getting off a track 
So the word that kept coming in as we began this segment for me was also creativity and mm. letting. Mm. So if joy is a, too abstract for somebody, you might consider um, bringing in creativity, which is life force energy really right and then allowing right. that to infuse and to bring it forward and it it, re it brings to mind the seven days of joy that we are doing at the beginning of the new year and just a, a few weeks ago maybe even just a week ago <laughs> helena and i you know, came together, should we be a part of this? And we didn't mm -hmm. even know if we wanted to or not, but we felt the creativity, the ideas come and we said, oh, we'll keep it easy. We won't do much. We'll just do a little bit here. And like Helena said, <laughs> she's been spending weeks doing this. We've been working on it. You know, we've got, we're advertising for something free. We're working all, you know, there's nothing we get out of this except spreading more joy. <laughs> And right, we want right. that so bad. There's no results other than we're going to do our very best to reach as many people as we can to help them right. start the new year in joy. To me, right. that's the mm -hmm. essence of it. And the miracles and the successes and all the other things take care of themselves when you're in that space. You know, mm -hmm. as you as you're talking about this, I'm I am, you know, I know people maybe kind of scratching their head around. If I'm asking for what I, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm asking for a certain result, how can that limit myself? And the answer is, is that the universe is unlimited mm -hmm. and that, that the universe, that there could be a plan for you that's greater and better than anything that your mind, right? right. Small M can see. And so... If you're saying, I want a 2025 Mercedes Benz, blah, 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 blah. And that's what you think is going to bring about this happiness and this joy in your life. The universe can be like, yeah, that's cool. But there's this thing over here that I've been, that has, that is yours, that is your birthright, that I've been waiting to give you. When you're ready to receive it, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but you keep asking for this other thing over here. But right. so you have to go to a higher level frequency and let that flow into your life. And Brian, it, that reminded me. Yeah. It, this is such a clear example of that. So um, I have a dear friend who I call my English mom. And um, I remember her lifetime goal was a midnight blue convertible Mercedes. And it was just her <laughs> dream car. And she just always wanted it. And then they had some success and her husband bought her this car. And she was taking me for a drive in it for the first time, you know, for me. And she says to me, you know what? I was more happy before I got it when it was still a dream. Now it's just a car. Ta-da. Yeah. So when you start talking about the Mercedes, I'm like, I got the perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, right? I mean, um, you know, we we talk about these things, Helena, and we talk about them such at, at a at a at a um I look at it as a lowercase level, right? happiness with the small h we we try to create mm -hmm. it through our minds with the small m and we don't go to the next level up right where listen if 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 instead of saying well i'm going to i want to lose weight you could move into a joyful experience of i want to feel joy as i look at my body i want to feel joy, it joyfully fit, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're not putting a, a, a resolution on what thing is, or what e e e event is going to make you feel better about yourself. You start from feeling better about yourself from the beginning and move into that feeling and embody that mm -hmm. feeling. And then mm -hmm. the other stuff will take care of itself, right? It will. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So it's so much about openness, right? Being open. Yes. Yes. And letting go too, right? You you said this mm-hmm. before. We're surrendering that result, surrendering our, you know, our mind wants to control, right? Because it only knows ones and zeros, X's and O's. Mm. <laughs> it, 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 is a, it is a computer, right? And so we don't think about, we don't, we, we don't have the concept in our head of, infi- of infinite experience, right? We, we, it is outside of that grasp. We have to go to a higher level, which are soulful beings or spiritual beings, whatever you want to call it, and and create from that space right um um it's so so important and there's a beautiful way that you guys have created we've been talking about it off and on for you know the last hour or so about this seven days of joy um and that i think this would be a excellent way for people to experiencing being renewed and that kind of thing. And it's something that people can do every single day, regardless of whether or not it's a new year. I think the three of us still are talking about the intentionality of Mm -hmm. that. We, that this is just a daily practice. We might kind of take stock at the end of the year and like clean it like you feel gratitude, but it's not like, okay, I'm going to make myself better by doing X and starting January 1st. It's not like that. Can you talk a little bit about, Helena, I'm going to go to you first about this beautiful program, um, which is the seven days of joy, rest, and reweaving wholeness, which is absolutely free. You know, can you talk about it? I'll talk about it and let people know about what this program is. Absolutely. And I will try to limit myself because I'm so enthusiastic about it. But <laughs> in essence, it's, it's an experience that we're creating for people one hour every day, starting January 1st and then for seven days. And each day has its own experience. So there are meditations, there are inspiring talks. Um, there is a writer w- workshop, there's a breathing workshop, uh, there is a cafe, there, are, uh, yeah. uh, there is a creative workshop. And, um, and the, the thing is that all of it is, again, very much about creativity. As you mentioned, Sheila, that's, that's such a powerful way into joy. And we, because it's day after day, we build joy up. So we create an, a, a space for joy. And, and when you think about resolutions, imagine that there is this, this space, this room that, that we create in different ways. And that in itself is a, a fun and inspiring experience. But you can actually bring your resolutions in there. You can mm, say to yourself, mm, okay, mm. I want to I want to be inspired to the best resolutions for me while I'm right. participating. Or you can chat about it with the people that are there because these are interactive experiences on Zoom. So so it's uh, it's just going to be great. Now I better stop, yeah. but I could just go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should it. say though that that, that, that you have to register it's for it's totally free but but we ask you to register at joykeepers.org slash seven days and then we'll send mm-hmm. you all the information absolutely and we have we're, we're we put this information in our chat as well sheila what are your thoughts about this fantastic uh, uh well, know, online just, experience um, yeah I'm so excited. The idea to really infuse the first seven days um, of the year with joy in so many different creative ways. It is one hour every day, but it's also recorded. So if you can't commit to it at that time each day, you still have that to turn to and to experience and infuse within you. Um, it is not a promotion that we're doing in order to sell you something at the end. This is just to bring joy into your life with right. no strings attached. We have created a, a raffle just to help get the word out to more people. And so you can also see the raffle and the way to um, to be put in for the chance to win a session, an individual session with either Helena or with myself um is basically to follow the thing and to just help us share it out so more people can start their year with joy Mm, we hope mm, you'll do mm. that Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is like so fantastic. Um, and the truth, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take, uh, you know, editor's privilege here and just and correct uh, you, Sheila. You do get something out of it. Oh, you yes. <laughs> oh, we get joy. You we do. get, yes, we get an abundance yeah. amount, but we are not joy taking begets joy any begets joy. Thing from you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, 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 um, I, I think, I think what I would sell people around all of this is when you move into joy and gratitude and an experience of love and you're moving and these are all with capitals right these are title case so mm -hmm. you know uh love with a capital l gratitude with a capital g joy with a capital j you know these experiences when you move into them your life experience changes mm -hmm. and you attract to you all the things that match that frequency and 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 if you don't believe me try it Try the try would <laughs> go to seven days, right? Um, do these things, take an hour each day, make you know, make a commitment to doing it. Or going back, if, if you can't make it during that time, go back and, and do it before. Maybe even allowing yourself to go back and 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 watch the things over and over again that you're resonating with. And what will happen is is that you it as long as you're paying attention. <laughs> you will mm -hmm. see things change. You know, mm -hmm. you may get a phone call out of the blue. You may get other things out of the blue. And so just do that, you know. Um, guys, I wish we had more time to kind of talk about this stuff. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, we've run out of time. So thanks guys for being here. <laughs> You know, Joy again, does that. Um, I does know, that. right? <laughs> Golly. Well, listen, everyone, uh, thanks to you both, Helena and Sheila, for being here. Thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, we've kind of run out of time. So we'll see you tomorrow when we're talking about winter solstice. So until next time, bye for now. Global LLC has explicitly granted